Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to <laughs> UFC Roundup. I'm Paul Felder. This is Michael Kiesa. As you can see, we are in studio here together. Um, all right, let's get the energy up. That's yeah, let's get the energy going. This isn't here. Roundup After Hours. It's a project we've been working on. We'll, but uh, we'll get but that is something that is coming to you guys soon. We need to get the tweets out to UFC Roundup After Hours Yeah, or absolutely. After Dark, whatever you prefer. Yeah. But listen, 289 is in the books. Amanda Nunes, the GOAT, continues to be the GOAT and may forever be the GOAT because she retired, Michael. Quick thoughts on that, and then we're going to talk co-main event, and then we're going to get into our five rounds. But yeah. real quick off the top, what are your thoughts on that performance? What are your thoughts on her retiring after that matchup? And uh, just the overall Canadian crowd was was pretty epic to oh, be there, I can tell you. The Canadian crowd showed up for sure, and the Canadians went undefeated. Pretty sure they I went 6-0. Yes, something, they did. Something At of that least sort. 6-0, and 5-0, I think, for actual Canadians. And then Belbita, who reps and lives in Canada yeah. now for several years, is – had another amazing performance. Yeah. So for but for Amanda, it's just another masterclass. I mean, she went out there, pitched a shutout. <clears throat> Aldania just looked like a deer in the headlights. It looked Big like time. she she got in there with the goat and she just didn't know what to do. And she just kind of stayed too much, I guess you could say within herself, really just too too reactive. And, and Amanda just went out there and just like she was giving her so many different looks, using her kicks, using all different types of weapons. Um, you know, and then Amanda, you know, leaves the game on top which is the the entry the entry into the sport is always easier than the exit and yeah. for her to exit with both of her titles um and she you know she's fought in canada a few times so i think yeah. it's like it's like a second home for her so uh you know for her to 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 leave the game on top i know that there's a disgruntled juliana pena in chicago oh illinois right now that but, was on full display in the crowd that night yes it was <laughs> yes it was and uh but at the end of the day you know, we we have to celebrate what a run she was on because it was one of the the. There's a reason why we call her one of the greatest combat sport athletes of all time. It's not even just calling her the best female. It's like she yeah. is one of the best, male or female, it doesn't matter. I mean, her reign, her title reigns as good as anybody's. Yeah, and she looked unbelievable, <clears throat> man, to be there calling it live. She was playing with her food. Yeah, be, literally. That's what she was doing. I mean, if she wanted to get a takedown, she was getting takedowns, letting her stay down there and standing back up. Obviously, I thought she would have the most advantage on the mat. She didn't even really need to use that. Her boxing was on point. And every time that Aldana would even get something going, she just never followed up. I can only imagine what her corner felt because I was frustrated commentating yeah. it. And again, I've never been in that position. I've never been fighting for the belt against one of the greatest of all times. I, I can imagine that's what it would be like when you were fighting Habib at the height of his reign, right? You just almost freeze up. You don't know what to do. And that is exactly what happened. But that's not taking anything away from Amanda because she took full advantage of that, mixed up her game. You could tell that the last thing she wanted to leave fans with was that I can do whatever I want inside of this case Absolutely. against these females. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, and she did. I mean, she literally, she could have beat Aldana anywhere. She, anywhere she wanted. I feel like she, if she wanted, she could have just jumped guard, been like, I'm just going to beat you from my back. And it's probably just, pulled off a sub. It, exactly. So, but that was a great performance. And when you talk great performances, you got to talk Charles Oliveira. Oh, oh, my God. Just a buzzsaw. I mean, he goes out there against Benil Darius, who's on an eight fight win streak. And you look at the guys on Benil's resume Mateusz Gamrot, Tony Ferguson. I mean, he's beat very, very high caliber competition. And Charles, I mean, and not only did Charles make it look easy, Paul, but this is the first fight I feel like we've seen in a while from Charles where he didn't have to take damage. Like, yeah, there's a lot of he fights didn't get where, dropped. A lot of fights he gets dropped in like, like we've always talked about. Remember we, how, how he said that Charles uses his own type of standing eight count where he'll get dropped yeah. and he'll go to his guard and guys won't engage in that area with him so he can kind of regain, regather himself. He didn't do that. Well, he did jump. He did he go pulled to guard. guard and Benil looked like, but you, did you notice it? Ben, not a lot of those shots were landing clean. Benil a few times. Charles had good head movement, <laughs> even from his back in that position. And then we were talking on the on the broadcast booth, too. I think DC said it. When he actually decided to get up, he got up it just easily. Yeah. He made it look easy. So when he was down there, he wanted to start that fight off. Okay, let me see. Can I pull something off quick from my guard? Yeah. And then went right back to his stand-up. And for to, to beat a guy like Benil Darius, like you're talking about, who's been on the run that he's on and who's as durable and as tough and his own world words, loves the ugly in a fight, right? Yeah. He likes him. Well, he was given that yeah. and had the opportunity to fight in his wheelhouse where he wanted to, in the clinch, all those things. And Charles just made it look easy, man. And the power that he has nowadays, finally growing into that body, accepting being a lightweight for as long as he has now, 
He's the second best lightweight in the world right now compared to Islam. And that's the fight that we're going to talk about in a little bit. What's next for these guys? So with that being said, let's get to the five rounds. Get into five rounds. I like that. It's a good segue. Let's see what we got with round one. <clears throat> Are you at all disappointed that Amanda left after a fight where her opponent really didn't give her anything back? I'll leave the dance on this one. You know what? I'm not disappointed because you can't always ask for that when somebody's that good. You know, it's like aside from Pena and Duranamine and Shevchenko, you know, not a lot of not a lot of females have really given Amanda that type of a tough fight. And it, there's nothing to be upset about. You know, it's like, would we have liked to see a knockout or a finish? Yeah, for sure. But at the end of the day, she still won. And while it wasn't the most exciting fight. It's still, it doesn't disappoint me that she didn't have to go through some back and forth war before she rode off in the sunset. Yeah, I mean, you're not always going to get everything you want. To go out on top like that, to go out with the resume that you had and leave with both belts, I mean, you can't also have it necessarily be a battle and a war with somebody. She already had that. She had it with Juliana. She lost the belt. She regained it. She looked great in the rematch. Yeah. And I know it's disappointing for Pena, right? I I, I do understand where she's coming yeah, from. You want to get that next shot. You beat her. You finished her that first time you guys fought. She came back and won a decision over you. All things point to that fight happening. Unfortunately, MMA doesn't work that way. You got hurt. The fight fell through. Uh, Irene stepped in, and this is what she was left with. And we kind of just had a sense that Amanda was nearing the end anyway. Yeah. And if... She went out there and kind of had a flawless performance. I think on the broadcast booth, we kind of anticipated. We actually kind of had odds going. DC thought she had a lot more left in her. Um, I think we even talked about on the weigh-in show, over under three more fights in her career. When I said way under, so yeah, I picked it. The only thing that disappoints me, Paul, before we move on to round two is, and I'm not saying this from like a bias standpoint. I'm saying this unbiasedly. I would have liked to see the trilogy because I feel like yeah. – when it comes to female mixed martial arts, especially here in the UFC, we haven't seen, we, we've had very few trilogies. And me as a fan, I've always loved trilogies. Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard, you know, and then Junior Dos Santos and Cain Velasquez. I always loved the trilogies. And it would have just been cool to see what would have happened if they got to fight a third time. But, yeah. you know, who knows? Maybe down the road, maybe Julie goes on a run, wins the title, and Amanda comes back. Who knows? But it would have been cool to see the trilogy happen. Always, right? Anytime something is one and one as humans, we want to see the finality of it. We want to see it end. And uh, we didn't get that. So, no. of course, that would be the one disappointment. Yeah. Rondos. Speaking Spanish today. Who? Check you out. Oh, Michael, can you read that? Because I, I can't even I got read. you, Polly. Your overall thoughts on Oliver's performance. Do you see another match against Islam going differently? What should be next for Benil? And that's coming from the UFC Obsessed. Yes. Big, big fight fan. Big fight fan. I will take this one. Man, that. You see the, my age coming through there? 39. You hit 39, and I need glasses. Sorry, I could not read that from here. And your young eyes I see like were able to see that. Um, I do think that it could go differently. I don't necessarily think that Islam's going to lose to Charles. I think that he would still retain his belt, just based on where my head's at today. However, that doesn't mean that the fight wouldn't go differently. If Charles fights a little bit more intelligently i think in the first one he was very excited he wanted to go and prove a point he went out there and he was just a little reckless with how he moved forward in his very muay thai upright stance against somebody like islam who's so powerful in the wrestling department you can't sleep on his power coming from that southpaw stance with that left hand and his counter ability i think he's just a better overall overall around fighter than charles kind of gave him credit for in that first fight have having said that i think if they fight again I think Charles would be a little more aggressive from the outside and not rush to get right up in his face like he did. I mean, he kind of walked into him like he was just going to be able to take all that or submit him off of his back, and it didn't work out for him. He kind of got worn on for a little while and then ultimately finished. I think a, a rematch would be different. I don't necessarily think that he would win it, though. No, I agree with you. I, it, the things he did in the Benil fight, apply that to the Islam fight, and I think it could go a little bit differently. Like, I love the way he did the the right high kick masked behind the right straight against yeah. Benil, who's also a southpaw like Islam. Use those types of weapons and you can make it more of an interesting fight. But at the end of the day, Charles always has these moments in the fights where he he will it's I, I don't want to say concede because it'd be the it'd be the wrong word to use because he's so offensive from his back. But he always has these moments in his fights where he goes to guard and it works for him. But you look at Islam Mahachev and you look how physical he is. And you have to pay respect to these Sambo guys. They're very talented grapplers. I mean, 
let's rewind to when Habib fought Justin Gaethje. He pulled for a topside triangle and rolled to guard. Like these guys can fight in in a way that Charles does as well. So yeah. for Charles, for it to go differently, I think he would have to try to focus on keeping the fight on the feet. So um, could it go di differently? Yes. Do I think he could win? It's still a very tough mountain to climb. A big mountain to climb. But yeah. again, I think we both agree that he wouldn't go at him the same way that he did. And he's now got that confidence right back to go get a big first round finish over somebody like Benil, who's as tough as he is, who's as strong of a grappler as he is, is, is huge for Charles. But you can't, you just can't go in hands high looking for big knees and stuff like that. If you don't catch him, Islam's going to end up on top of you. And if he ends up on top of you, it is going to be a nightmare of a night for you. Round three. I got, I got it right here got now. Right there. Now, there now I can see. Here this. we go. Okay. Um, Habib versus Charles, undefeated versus overall resume. Who is the lightweight goat? I'll start with this one, Paul. So even though you read it, but I feel passionately about this. Then, one. then you should start. You know, this goat conversation it it be, it, it it becomes such a it's it's not factual. It becomes very opinionated. Yes. Yeah. Is Habib the lightweight goat? He's got the record. He's twenty nine and zero. He's got the unblemished, perfect record. But I, I, where I get upset when people try to make the comparison with Charles is they're like, well, he's lost nine times. I'm like, well, Charles Oliveira got in the UFC before he, almost shortly after he hit puberty. Like yeah. the kid, the kid was wasn't even a man yet. He was a boy fighting grown so men. So skinny when he first he, came dude, in, dude. And he's fighting. And they're like, well, he's lost to Cowboy Cerrone. Well, there was a point in time where people have this bad short term memory in MMA. Yeah. Cowboy was dominating back then. Cowboy was crushing it. So yeah. he's lost to guys that are really freaking good and that he was so young and it's like you know for for the for the guys like the islams and the habibs and the the hamzats like sometimes it's hard to get him those marquee fights because nobody's chomping at the bit to fight somebody that's got a v at the end of their last name you know it's like you're like oh he's got a v at the end of his last yeah, name these he, guys gotta start changing you, their name yeah, to like you, smith yeah you know what you're getting yourself into but for charles it's like for him that to, guy doesn't look like a smith for for him to take those lumps at a young age against the elite and not to mention paul charles Oliveira has been on the ufc roster since a time when there was like a hundred guys yeah. the joe silva era when we didn't have very many weight classes no. so it was and only you didn't have many options if it joe was silva said you're fighting this guy there was, was like, no yes, daryl so fighting for a year. there was no daryl horchers in the ufc no disrespect to daryl horcher but it's like there was no like habib he, one of the the fights on his record, Daryl Horcher. Yeah. There was no guys like that when Charles first got in the UFC. It was just the best of the best, and we still have the best of the best. But yeah. we also have the guys that are working their way, still. working their way still. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of uh, yeah. I, I I agree that this is one of those questions that's it, 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 there's not there's not going to be a right answer. You can't say one or the other because Charles' resume and how he you know kind of rose, it, like he was saying recently this week, like a phoenix. To this moment, uh, I mean, there's something to be said about that too. That having your downs, and, but then of course, if you're talking about the, the greatest of all time, going undefeated, having the belt, walking away from it the way he did against the people that he did, um, I, I, I would think, yeah, you still got to have a slight edge to to Habib. But if yeah. Charles continues and gets that belt back yet again against the protege of Habib in Islam. Then I think we're talking that it could it could shift. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if he beat Islam? That would be. I mean, then then the thing we're all crossing our fingers. If he can beat Islam, this is what I hope. You call out. You call out Khabib. That's my wishful thinking. Is I hope like God, it'd be so cool to see Islam, and it'd be cool to see Charles beat Islam, and then draw Habib out of retirement for the mega fight, like yeah. the lightweight supremacy. This settles the score. Who is the best of all time? Wishful thing. I mean that 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 settles it for sure. That was There's no doubt wishful. about in anybody's mind. If no. whoever wins that one, there you go. Yeah. Round four. Round four. Round four. We're 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 rattling these off. You got to read it. Yep. Okay. With the Bronx first round knockout, and Islam calling out Leon. This sets a bunch of possibilities. We could potentially see Islam versus Chamayev down the road. What makes the most sense for Islam? I say the Leon fight and go for double champ. Paul, I'll let you lead the dance. Listen, on this one. He, you know. I love double champ status. I love all of this kind of stuff. But I feel like you've got to hold that belt a little longer. I feel like you've got to beat a few more people before you start trying to jump into different weight classes when both of those weight classes are struggling for consistency to begin with, right? Leon is looking all over the place. When there's two clear guys we've already mentioned, there's Bilal Muhammad, and then there's supposed to be Colby Covington, which 
you got to fight one of those guys. Yeah, absolutely. To keep the welterweight division moving along nicely. Yeah. And for the lightweights, we just got this champion, right? He went already and try and and fought uh, uh, Volkanovski, not at 145, but still, you fought a guy that's really not a 55er, and you won and you retained your belt. But but th that would really muddy things if we have him jump up to welter right now. I think right now he has got to fight either Charles again or the winner of Justin Gaethje and yeah. Dustin Poirier. This way you get new contenders, right? He hasn't fought either one of those guys based on their performance coming up. That could jump the line for sure. Yeah. But I mean, Charles did everything that he needed to do because Benio was on the streak. He was going to potentially get that title fight. If he won, Charles went and stuffed that down like it was nothing and puts himself right in that mix. I don't mind seeing that fight again. That's a rematch where you got two of the greatest in the division, maybe ever. Let's see them fight again, but don't go jumping ship and, and looking for double champ stats. Now, if he beats Charles again or beats one of those other guys in Dustin or Justin, then I think, okay, maybe we can talk about, especially if he does it handily, then maybe you talk about letting him have the opportunity for double champ status. I think that he he hasn't done enough to go fight for double champ status. It's like even look at Volkanovsky. Look how long, look how many yeah. fights it took for him before he tried exactly. to challenge for the lightweight title. Same with Israel. Israel had to put together you know, a few title title defenses before he went on to fight Jan Blachowicz in an unsuccessful bid to become double champ. So it takes, it, you can't just like, yes, we know how great Islam is. We know the potential there. We see it. But you still have to prove that you're that guy before you can move up and challenge Leon Edwards. And not to mention, I don't think Leon Edwards would be super thrilled about fighting Islam. Yeah, I don't think that's a fight. I don't know if that would entice him at all. A, stylistically, that's a hard fight for him. Yeah. And B, it's, it's, right. it's, it would, it would almost, it would almost, de it would, it would, it would water down him as the champ. Like you have two guys, especially Bilal, you got a guy who's on an insane win streak, who's like out for blood with you. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to fight the guy, the winningest guy in my division right now. I'd right. rather fight a lightweight. Like it would really make Leon, it would make him look bad. So yeah. I think that it's best for Islam to continue to dominate his division. And same with Leon Edwards, respectively, and hopefully down the line. Maybe if they're both winning and it works out, we can see it happen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think we're both on the same page. It's just a little too soon for a big jump like that. And and for Leon, too, man, you, you, you've got a clear contender. You've got a guy in Bilal who's on a win streak. You've got this bad blood going with Colby and all this kind of stuff. Let, let's make one of those happen. If Colby doesn't want to fight, which it, it, I'm hearing that. It could potentially be from Leon that that fight is not happening, right? What, it's, not, it's not Colby. Colby. Yeah. It makes more sense. If Leon wants to fight, you know, I know we're going off beat from 289, but while we're here, might as well address it. If they're, if, if Leon wants to fight in Abu Dhabi in October, it's Bilal. Yeah. It's, there's no other guy. Like, it makes no sense to take, you know, the tried and true red, white, and blue Colby Covington and have him fight the champ in, in UAE because it's like, Bilal, that's like that's part of his heritage. Like he's yeah. he's Middle Eastern. He's like got, he's got a huge fan, fan base the over there. Most, loves fighting there himself. It makes the most sense for Bilal to fight Leon in Abu Dhabi in October. That's just my take. We got to get Bilal on the show. Yeah, that's you got to get Bilal on the show. Yeah, comment and put in the comment section that we want the bully on the show. Yeah, get bully on the show get for sure. We'll show. Get, Let's go we'll around. Get some haters out too. He's got plenty of that. Yeah, he's he does. <laughs> round five, Pena. Versus Pennington for the vacant title. Yes. Also, is Putin Canada's only food contributor to the world? Okay. I'm going to just start with the Putin thing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yes, possibly. But it's delicious. And there's a thousand different ways that you can do it. Oh, so even if it is their only contribution, it's a fantastic one. And I think they're probably the world's largest producer maybe of maple syrup. So oh yeah, there's that. In Labatt's? And, and some... You know, I think I had a Labatt. Is that what we were drinking on the set for yeah. the Wayne show? Yeah. Was it Labatt? Shout out to my friend Nicole. She's Canadian. Nice. And she's like, I said something about Labatt Blue, Labatt's in Canada. She's like, there's more to Canada than poutine and Labatt's. I'm like, I no, there's not. <laughs> but, yeah, there's moose. There's beautiful scenery. Yeah. There's Banff, tough people. Timmy Horton. There's my buddy Lionel Sanders. Great tryout. Timmy Horton. Timmy. I got to say. Uh-oh. 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 Tread I, I, lightly. I, You're talking about a national... <laughs> A treasure, the, the I know. National treasure of Canada. But Tim Hortons. It's like, you know what? When you see gold is treasure, right? Yeah. You know those chocolate gold coins that really suck? That's the kind of treasure that I think Timmy Hortons is. Oh. Sorry, Canada. Oh. I love you, and I'll be back in Halifax coming soon when hey, we come me back. me too. So. Salute to that, buddy. Halifax. Uh, to the top half of that, 
round anyway. <laughs> talking about Pena versus Pennington for the vacant title. It's the fight that makes the most sense. Yeah. Raquel's streaking right now. Obviously, Julie is the shoe in for the vacant title because she was supposed to fight Amanda this last weekend. And there's a little bit of a storyline. They're both from the same season, Ultimate Fighter, season 18, I believe. So there's a storyline. It's the fight that makes sense. Uh, I know Jermaine, Jermaine Durandamine recently reached out, said she's interested in fighting again, possibly Paris. Um, so that makes yeah. that makes the division interesting as well. Jermaine hits about she. Yeah, we we pound we, for pound one of the hardest punchers on the roster. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's got dynamite in those hands. That'd be fun to see her come back. Um, I, I'd love to see her come back she, with the dynamic striking ability. Yeah, she could really mix things up, especially with Amanda gone. It's like, all right, now, yeah, you know, yeah, put yourself right back in that mix. But yeah, so I think Pena versus uh, Pennington makes sense, and Poutine, love it. And Canada, I'm only kidding with you. I absolutely love that country, and oh, I had it's a fantastic best. time every time I've been there. And I fought twice in Halifax, so uh, there's definitely a, a, a soft spot in my heart for Canada. And that was the first time I've been to the west coast of Canada. And man, I got to start getting to the you know you Pacific come, North, come North, the Pacific Northwest. Northwest Polly, yeah. come on over. And we're Beautiful. if you're wondering, yes, we're both working this weekend. A little offbeat, but we got Victoria Cannon here. And I'm working on the on the on the actual call, so I cannot make a prediction. But Michael, yes, sir. Let's hear it, man. What do you think? So Vittori versus Cannoneer, it's a case of speed versus power. And obviously, we all know where the power lies. The power lies with Cannoneer. The guy's got knockout wins in three weight classes in the UFC. Scary dude. Very, very scary guy. And Vittori, you know, he's a guy that's relocated himself here to Las Vegas. He's coming off tough win over Roman Delize, really starting to get himself into a groove. So it's a case of speed versus power. Um, I, I think speed wins this fight. And even if I didn't think speed wins this fight, I would still pick Vittori because he bears the green, white, and red flag of the motherland, Italy. Paul, I know you're... Maybe you can talk to him from you then. Yeah, maybe and I'll put on can, a good we word We can squash you. this We can this iron things nonsense. out a little bit. Yeah. I think I bet you're excited for that post fight speech to be there. Well, you know what? I, I when we do fighter meetings tomorrow, I'm going to talk to him and be like, "Listen, I'm the one doing <laughs> the interviews. I have nothing against you. Hopefully, your hatred of me, we've gotten past that. I wouldn't call it hatred. You know, I think yeah. he's annoyed by me more than anything. Which, yeah. hey, I'm not going to. Not everybody's going to love me. No. That's just how it is. Yeah. I said something on a broadcast sometime. He didn't take too kindly to it, and that's the job. There's yeah. going to be guys out there, you know, that. Um, aren't going to approve of everything I say. But, Vittori, I'm still excited to call your fight. I think you're a fantastic fighter. and I'm very curious to see how this matchup plays out with such a powerful guy. Well, we got this card right here while we're here. Yeah, all, all 14 what, what, fights. What fight are you looking forward to most on the card mm. while we're here? Uh, well, I mean, my boy Pat Sabatini is getting back in the octagon, uh, a local guy from a gym that I've grown up training with him since he was basically a child. Um, and Armin Sarukian, anytime yeah. that he is. That is uh, on the card against Joaquin good. Silva is a, a fun fight. Armin Petrosian is always fun to watch. Uh, Wasn't that supposed to be Petrosian and um, Petrosky? I think Petrosky got hurt, right? Yeah, he uh, he was injured. I, uh, I'm not exactly I sure. I thought it was supposed to be Petrosky versus Armand. Or maybe I'm just thinking. I don't know. For the for Armand Petrosian? Yeah, I, th I, thought Potentially. It was, I thought it was supposed to be Petrosky. Who yeah, it's hard to keep tracks. It's, Andre, heal just, up if you're out we're there. We're just rolling hurt. them off. But hey, like you said, the fight I'm looking forward to, co-main event, Sarukian versus Joaquin yeah. Silva. And when you're talking, Benil Dariush, I mean, Armand Sarukian wins against Joaquin he's Silva. Calling, he's calling somebody big out. Yeah, he's well, calling as somebody he should. He deserves a big fight. And you deserve a big breakfast. So we're getting the hell I, out of here. My breakfast is here. <laughs> and that being said, 289 in the books, UFC Roundup in the books. Check out this weekend. Vittori Cannoneer is going to be an awesome main event, awesome co-main event. Michael, you got to go train. You got a fight coming up, too. That's right. Yeah, that's right. 291 SLC. Let's go. That's why I got my Stockton jersey on, baby. Peace out.